Now, now if you listen, this is why he had to change his piece. Oh, that sounds perfectly fine. That's normal. That's factory. To quote Derek, that's factory right there. And if anyone's yeah, watching this, don't know this. who Derek is, I will. And that's why the sensor's not working right. Ah, oh, that's fine. You know, because as normal. it spins around in front of the magnet, it's going. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. That's you know, that's All factory right. spec. Factory spec. But see, in your eyes, you were saying, "Oh, just change the top part." Now, if this one had the normal U shape that the other one has, you would have changed the top part, put it back in, and you would still have the same problem. And well, you'd have to do this a second time. Well, yeah, that sounds exactly like something I would do. Getting really tired of working on this damn truck. So we're back. I'm your host, Ty Lord Fox. This is not our garage, but the channel is called High Lord Fox Garage, so pretend we're in a garage. Uh, we're back with the 2001 Mountaineer, and today's bit of adventure is this guy. Ow. That was kind of hot. Don't, don't touch hot engine bolts. Uh, is the camshaft position sensor. It's been throwing a check engine light. We've checked it. We've cleared it. It's come back. So we're going to pull it out and replace it. Hopefully this will be easier than the Grand Am. So the first thing is airbox has to come out because I got to get a something down in there and we have to turn the engine to top dead center. This in there has got a weird gear like mechanism y thing. We'll see more when I pull it out. And it gotta do it at top dead center. If you don't do it at top dead center, you're gonna have all sorts of problems and you have to have a special tool to get it to synchronize and push in the right place and everything. So we're gonna we're gonna get it top dead center first and go from there and try and make our lives a lot easier. So this will be your part, camshaft position sensor. I mean, you can get away with just changing the piece at the top, but since it comes to an entire assembly, we're going to change the entire assembly. It comes with a special tool to align the gear, because the gear is worm-shaped. See, I told you. Your sensor, and as you drop the tool in, as the gear goes in, the gears push in. So as this turns, it drives it in, so where the sensor would read for your timing, you have to get it in the correct position, just like a distributor, when you replace a distributor. Thanks, Ford. So, earbox on these, in case it's not uh, described in a previous video, has two mounts, these little hook things, hook things pop right off, the top shifts up like this way, and then it goes up and out. There are three grommets. Spray them with Four grommets. Didn't we just do that last time? I'm just telling for whoever tries to do it, spray it with lubrication from the top into the holes that you can see that will allow the grommets to loosen up. You can do that. Now, you could do that. You should do that. Or you could just manhandle it out like, you know, you a real professional. And then you will break the tabs off the bottom of the airbox, and the airbox won't stay when you put it back. No one needs it to stay. What is this? You think this is some sort of like actual educational channel? Yeah. But in serious, yeah, spray it. Otherwise, they will uh, rip and tear. And unfortunately, this isn't a doom game. What are you two doing? Hey, what's up, dudes? How you guys doing? Hey, what'd you get out of there? Get. Get out. Hey, hey. Come on, out. No, no. Motherfucker. Get out. So, brief interlude off camera. Um, there are a pair of chipmunks, Chip and Dale, that like to run around out here. And uh, they're just running around playing in the background, so. Get. Get, get go away. This is my show, not yours. That is the crankshaft. That is the little knob that's supposed to tell you when it's top dead center. Technically, yeah, the timing mark. Technically, when you're putting a cam in or doing anything with the heads of the cam or timing, that notch, the bottom of the notch, is supposed to be at the top of that mark. 
However, we are not putting in a camshaft or doing that. We just need to be as close to top dead center as possible. So uh, if you're doing anything timing related, push it the extra half a degree degree to make sure you're top dead center. All right, so with the ignition packs and everything pulled out of the way, that gives us a straight shot down to the offender, which is the camshaft sensor. There is two bolts on the top for the little sensory bit. There is the big nut on the side that uh, holds it in position. And then that whole assembly, as you can see, comes out like that. So uh, should be fun. I'm gonna spray it with a little bit more penetrating oil. Uh, we've cleaned it off, but the engine is still kind of warm down there. So uh, here's hoping we don't get burned. Part is the electronic component of the sensor. Right? You can see yeah. it's just a little magnet, and you see it's kind of burned in there. Mm -hmm. And the plastic usually breaks down. This is where they usually die. Yeah. Turn it I wonder if we can continue using the same sensor and just put the. Um... You probably could, but since ours is a whole assembly, we're going to change it. So now see the... Yeah, but we don't have to then worry about anything going wrong, which is the other concern that I might have. All right, but the problem is, is that for as many miles as on it, it has internal wear. So you're going to have a gear mechanism that has wear with a new sensor that does not. That sounds an awful lot like you're expecting this truck to last longer than it is. So, so. now, look at this top part here. And actually, it looks like a piece is missing. I thought it was supposed to have two tabs on that. Unless one tab is fully retracted down. Or broken off, or maybe someone only has one tab, I'm not sure. Uh -huh. So, at any rate, it says one tab, which is all the way... To the right. To the right. So now if you'll notice, here's what you're going to notice. What am I going to notice, Cargo Dave? Okay. See the little line the right line, there? Yep. The two lines there and this big thing here. Yep. See that line right there? I'm going to put a piece right through there and make a mark on that so that these two things are in the exact same position. That's how we're going to know if you set up in the right spot. Sounds an awful like professionals giving me instruction. I don't know if I like this. And so we have, by the power of editing, marks on it. Put a pick through the hole and he put it on the two sides of the pick and scraped it in. So there are our marks to make sure it all lines up properly. Cheap, fix it right. Yeah, Dave is car guy Dave is speaking way too much sense to me right now. But that's the hole, that's what it looks like. Just dark and foreboding and don't full of oil. Down in the water. Don't knock anything down in there. I'm making sure not to do that. So uh we're gonna go stick the thing in the hole and uh I'll try and get an angle of it. It's a little difficult because it's kind of cramped here, so uh but yeah, that's your hole, and the thing goes in the hole and it tells you whether or not it's spinning properly and all that fun stuff. So we have the alignment tool right, so when you set it in this is basically supposed to be pointing and there are instructions if you go want to go get them out of the thing so once you put it in and you turn it like it's supposed to end up at that yeah piece. so like I said it's a because it's a gear assembly. I see if you that brief moment that we saw it was turned out of spec. Right. As it drops in, the gear causes it to turn. Now if we did it right, see? Hey. That looks, looks uh, to me, 180 degrees out from where we want it to be. No, no, it's in the right spot. No, we go back to look at our pictures. No, we, oh, the center is in the wrong spot. Sensor is 180 degrees out from where I believe it's supposed to be. If we turn the, see, now see how, watch when I drop it in. Okay. I'm going to turn the gear. Try and turn the gear here. Okay, now just I'm just gonna drop it straight in and just watch. It's like doing a distributor on an old car. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that later. Okay. Now, as you push it down in, of course, 
rotates slightly. Yeah, it rotates. So I'm just going to rotate this direction. So I need to start it off. I need to start it off. Right, rotated. Has to be further back. One tooth. It's going to turn almost two full teeth. Man, I love gears. It's like timing all over now. Wow. That still looks a little bit far. I think we're we'll going to go one, one more right. tooth. Got to go back to two. Yeah. So I need to pull it up. And when it clears the distributor underneath, I moved it back one tooth. Yeah. So if we line up the center of our post here, should be the center of that thing. Well, it should be the center on that line there. And that's going to line up there. And that's mm -hmm. when we put our thing back in. And this one's got a lot nicer of a thing. It actually goes around the whole way. Right, it's a full and half moon instead it's a full of full half moon, and it also has a magnet on the inside and the outside, as opposed to just the exterior magnet on the old one. And ignore my dirty, dirty hands. So now I am dead center of my scratch marks there. Mm -hmm. So if I put our tightening thing down in there, then the dead center of this part here. Half moon to half moon it was right dead center in that. We are gonna have to yep. go back and double check the video, so you're gonna have to stop it. I want to go back. I want to see the video. Make sure 100% it was dead center on that mark. Look at him wanting to do things all professionally instead of yep. passing. This is why so. I bring my cars to Car Guy Dave. He's a much better mechanic than I am. Got the bolt. Uh, we've double checked the video. We've double checked the tapes, and it is just. Hair different, but uh, we're gonna chalk that up to differences in the me mechanics. If it doesn't read the code properly, it doesn't it has issues. Then what we're going to do is actually shift the thing a little bit. Oh, it's hard to see. We're gonna rotate it just a hair, uh, but we're gonna get it all in place first. So the, what he's doing, Dave is doing now, is he is never seizing never the bolt seizing a little nut and, and the retainer. Yep, the retainer. This guy. Yep. So that it, when we have to remove it in 15 minutes, uh, it's uh, very easy to pull out. You have no faith. I never have faith. I work in IT. And make sure that we are lined up dead center between our two marks, in which we are. Oops, see how that turns? Yeah. That's what we'll be doing if we're off on our adjustments in here. Just like so. Yeah, so make sure uh, you do that and check it before you tighten. I would have just tightened it and been like, huh, that's weird. It's not working now. And it just gets snugged. Not twisting it off with huge amounts of torque. All right, so we're going to reassemble, put the little top on, and we're going to get this all reassembled, uh, and we'll get back to it. Uh, close up once we've got it assembled really because otherwise it's just me holding a camera looking like an idiot. So we have to take a brief hiatus on this because as you can see this cap right here is designed for three posts in the front. And if we look at our handy dandy thing there are only two posts on this. So this model, although it's listed as being compatible, and this is actually an FD41, it's listed as compatible for this year. However, it is not compatible with our truck. The correct part we need is an FD40S. So, after some research, there's actually three parts that are technically compatible with this. The three-pin FD41, the two-pin FD40, which does has a very... Uh, shallow plug and the FDS which has a big section cut out so this whole plug can fit in it's a very long plug so when you are doing work on your vehicle whether it's a 01 Mountaineer or something else otherwise make sure to double check your pictures your cross references and know what you have and be prepared to have to make a emergency parts run because even if everything on the internet tells you it's compatible, once you get out in the meat space, you'll uh, sometimes find that there's uh, not exactly things lining up as you are. So, we are going to get the correct part in. 
it is already on order it should arrive tomorrow and hopefully i'll be back tomorrow to be able to finish this yay all right so picking up where we left off the part we installed turns out that it does not fit this truck the sensor is a three pit supposed to fit the truck does not fit the truck. So, this is what we got. Three pins. This is what we need. Two pins. Specifically the two pin the right deep pin. version. Yeah. So, so after all that time and effort and lining and getting it installed, it was all Back in the box But the real tools and the real parts were the friends we made on the way. Or some bullshit like that, I don't know. When you when you drop the distributor in, as the teeth go in and they're curved, it drops it in and turns it at an angle. So every time you turn it, the worm gears, as you drop them in, as these worm gears go in, it turns the machine like so. So your starting position is this piece has to be straight to the front on this motor. So when you have it straight to the front, if you drop it in, as worm gear goes in, it turns it, now you're in this position. So you have to start it in this position, so when it drops in, it turns, it ends up in that position. And that's where we're at now.
screw in. So our original part was from Spectra. The replacement is the Duralast Gold. Uh, while the Duralast Gold appears to work and fit in and be a plug in, like plug in and fit like it's supposed to, the Spectra, as you can probably see from watching, the Spectra was a lot easier to get in and out. So while the Duralast ones will work, and we had to do that as it the only one we could get before sometime at the end of the year or after the apocalypse uh, due to shipping times it should be working however the spectra one is a better one in my opinion easier to get in and get out uh, as long as you have the correct one which is a very important thing to uh, have in research so all right everything's out of the way cable coil plugged in wires are back in place Ready? Uh, I believe so. Hey, success! All right, so we have uh, put together everything on the front end on the engine. You don't need to see it; it's fine. Uh, it looks just like when we started. Take my word. And uh, now we're checking for codes. So what I have plugged in down here is a little OBD2 sensor. Uh, it connects to Bluetooth to your phone and uses the Torque app on your phone. Bring that up. Uh, link will be in the description. I've used this on my car and this vehicle several times. It is definitely worth the investment. And this, is the, oops, sorry. this is the tool that I used to figure out. It was actually the cram camshaft sensor. So, hold on, I'll find the hole. Down the hole. And you can also use this for real-time stats, acceleration, real-time information, get you acceleration, rev, throttle percentage, vacuum, coolant temperature, all that fun stuff. But we're most interested in the engine codes. Why is the screen not on? Because it does that to save power. Okay. So with it on, you just do a check for fault codes, and we get a different code. Ignition coil B, primary secondary circuit. So apparently we didn't plug something in properly enough. And Dave, the car guy, is about to check that. Off. On. Communicating, reading the codes. This app, I have the pro version, it was a couple dollars, and the uh, unit itself was about 20. There will be links to it in the description as mentioned prior. And now we've come up with no codes, now that uh, Dave the car guys pressed everything. Yeah,